Hi, so I'm Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I wanted to talk about my experience with the early college program in case anybody is in middle school and they're looking to get into it and kind of like knowing what they're getting into and all that. So um, starting off with a brief overview, the early college program um, is a program that they have in multiple states um, where you get to do college at a, when you're in high school. Now this is a little bit different than people who go to a normal high school and take AP classes or take college classes while they're in high school. And the biggest difference is when you're in high school taking AP or college courses, you're in high school, you go to high school, and then you take like college classes online or you take AP classes there and not do the college. Mine, you had high school for two years. So for freshman and sophomore year, there was a campus that was a high school that I physically went to. And then for the second two years, so my junior and senior year, I went to the college campus. Like I physically went to the college campus and those were my professors and my advisors and everything. So I really had not many ties back to my high school. So it's kind of the overview um, where you're in the high school for two years and then you're in college. And that's the program that was, um, that was presented to me as a middle schooler. Okay, so in middle school, um, everyone got the opportunity to take a bus to the early college and have a tour of the school. And at that time, I didn't think I wanted to do it, but I wanted to get out of school like most middle schoolers do. So I think they took one or two buses um, and you signed up for it and then you went and got a tour of the school. And while I was taking a tour, a lot of the things that they talked about seemed very, um, seemed like things that I was interested in. So um, there are a couple different selling points. One of them was because the school is small and because people are generally academically minded, there was a lot of freedom to be given. Um, they're not worried about, you know, making sure you have a hall pass, going to the bathroom. They're not like closely monitoring you. Um, another thing was there's no PE. There wasn't any PE in my high school. Um, another thing was that there's a one hour lunch. Um, and at that time of the tour, there was a foosball table in the cafeteria. There was a piano in the cafeteria. Um, there was an outside courtyard that you could eat lunch. Um, so all of this like really appealed to me. Um, also the classes are very small, so you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, and so like all of those things were appealing to me, but one of the biggest things that appealed to me was that, so you do high school for two years, college for two years, but at the end of that, so at the end of those four years, you get a high school diploma and you get an associate's degree and that is completely free. The whole program is free. And so that really appealed to me because, um, alongside a couple of those things, um, you know, getting an associate's for free is like crazy. Like it doesn't happen very often. Um, so those things kind of appealed to me and I was kind of convinced that I wanted to go. So then that was maybe in November. So then the next steps where you had to apply. So our applications were due in March and we had to write a 300 word essay, I think. Yeah, a three, I think it was three to 500 word essay about why we wanted to attend the school. So I turned that in in March and then I think maybe in May, they reached back out to me. They asked some people to do interviews 
um, because that was the next step. So there was one day when me and a lot of other people went down to the school and we, we brought our parents and then they took me individually into a room and they interviewed me and then they take me out of the room and then they took my mom into the room and talked to her. Um, there's a lot of different things that they ask you. It's been a while, but like some of the things are, they talk about academics, um, hobbies, why you think you'd be good there, like general interview questions. One of the things that um, some people say, now this is alleged, so I can't um, say for certainty, but that one of the things that they look for is good family support because the early college program is very challenging. And so they're looking for someone with familial familial support. However, that can lean towards more classism. Um, and because if you don't have two parents or your parents aren't together, um, they are less likely to pick you. And a lot of people have issues with that. And again, this is alleged, so I don't know. Um, I My parents are together, um, but I had a friend and her parents were not together. And she was a very strong candidate um, and she got rejected. And then another friend whose parents are together and she's upper class, she got waitlisted. Um, so I'm not sure. And then I have friends in the program whose parents, there are some whose parents are separated. So um, I don't know. But my experience was just, I went in, it went well, went home. And then later they sent me an email and they said they got accepted. So in our program in that year, out of the whole county, um, they could pick 50 people. I think they ended up picking 40 people um, or maybe a lot of them dropped out. However, March that year was when COVID happened, COVID 2020. So that was my eighth grade year. So my eighth grade year was pretty much like canceled after March. Like there was just nothing. And then that following August, we were still in COVID. So I didn't go to school. I, what, I had to attend classes online um, through Zoom meetings off of my Chromebook that they gave me. And then I also have a personal computer. So I would have both open, like I would have two monitors um, and like COVID learning was kind of terrible for ev everyone. And then after a couple months, some people were Monday, Wednesday, and some people Tuesday, Thursday. And then later it went to, I think everyone was Monday, Tuesday, no Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And a lot of the teachers advocated for keeping that Wednesday off um, just because it increased productivity and that's been shown, um, but the district it wouldn't let us do that. Um, so that was what happened. And then when we went back to school full time, um, a lot of the things that I would say were promised were not, um, which I was not happy about. Um, for example, one of the things was they promised us a one hour lunch, but because it was COVID, they encouraged us to not talk. And by doing that, they would have an online class. So we were physically in school, but it was an online class where whatever class we were in, um, because we weren't allowed to eat in the cafeteria. So we would eat in, I think, whatever our like second period was. We had to log into our Chromebooks and go to a Zoom where we would attend a class called College Connections, which was a pass or fail class and gave us no credits or anything whatsoever. Um, towards anything <laughs> um, and nothing really happened if you failed either and I don't think anyone failed I don't even think that was possible to fail um, and we had to attend that that was mandatory technically but I think a lot of times I didn't attend further into the school year they started to make us do PE which was basically just one of the teachers took us to um, the auditorium or the gym of the accompanying school, which was like a kindergarten school um, or something. 
and would make us like exercise and I was like just basically doing whatever he wanted us to do and then like he never told us when we were going to do it so like a lot of times I was wearing a heavy sweater because it was winter so there there were some issues there which I wasn't super happy about I went to uh, my principal about it and he kind of shut me down so getting into like the actual coursework so again you do high school for two years and college for two years now in these four years of everything your high school classes obviously go to your high school diploma and then your college classes go to both your college classes go towards your high school diploma and your associate's degree so they count double that means is in your first two years of high school you can't really have electives because you have to get through your high school courses that are like only your high school courses so um i don't have my transcript like i'm not looking at it but i had to take like a bunch of core classes all at the same time so i was in like all the four core classes which is english history math and uh language arts all at the same time uh, and there would be semesters where i would have like three final like three eocs which are state exams and then maybe one final exam which is a teacher made exam and so that was very difficult and then there were some electives but the electives were were not fun they were not meant to be fun um, and I didn't have a choice in this either. They didn't um, tell me what classes I was taking until they sent it out. I didn't have any choice in what class I was taking. I was just put into a class. So some of the, the electives I can remember are county history, computer science, and literary analysis. So those were the kind of electives we had. We didn't really have the option to take fun electives. There was no art, there was no music, there was no theater. Um, and then oftentimes we would have, I think we had a four, we had four periods in the day. So at the beginning of the day, we I think for a while we had this thing called Octo Time, which is kind of like a discovery where they just had us do like random things that really didn't affect anything which i also thought was poor choice um different there were some opportunities but there were also some things that they forced us to do arbitrarily and this is just my experience with my my school but they would have i remember one day they had us instead of doing coursework um they had us build goodie bags I think for the homeless population. Um, another day was a health day, which is how they could get away with not giving us health class. Um, so it was the whole day and it was, I think seven different periods or something. And then we went and kind of stations around the school and did health related activities. So like one of them was like what you normally think of as health. And then another, you were exercising and then another was yoga. And there were like a couple of different things that we went around and did. Getting into my sophomore years, they, they included clubs. Now clubs were, I think one period once a week for maybe an hour. Um, and the clubs you could choose, it was in, um, you would pick like your top three clubs and then they'd put you where they could. So I was in Miffy, which is math is fun for you, which was a good experience. And I'm, I'm happy that I, I'm happy that I did it. And I think it was a cool thing to do. We, me and some of my peers went to neighboring elementary schools and worked with the elementary school kids on math. Um, and then at the end of the year, what was cool is our, our club, just our club, got to go to Carowinds and just have fun. They excused it because it was like a STEM day, but it was really just Carowinds, but it was very fun. Um, Another experience is we had a county 
um, a county class where we learned about the county that we lived in and we went on a field trip to a neighboring town, like a neighboring downtown and we did a we did a project on it, but we got a tour and then we got to eat lunch at a restaurant, which was very fun. Um, we had the school newspaper come in and do a newspaper article on what we were doing. There were some other opportunities that I didn't, um, I wasn't interested in. We had a robotics club. There was a beta club. There was a mock trial club. Um, and these things were after school, so they were different from the clubs during the day. The other clubs during the day, I think, were drama and art, and mock trial was also during the day, I think. I think it was it was both. Um, those are the ones off the top of my head. I know there was also, like, a gym club. So all of those things were included, which are nice, but in the end, there were very few opportunities to do extracurriculars. So class size and school size. So we had, I think we had maybe eight teachers in all. Eight teachers in the whole school. I could probably name them. But so that meant if you didn't like a teacher, you would just stuck with that teacher for four semesters or two years, which is not ideal. So I had the same teacher for environmental science, biology and chemistry. I had the same teacher for, I think it was English one, English two, English three. I had two different teachers for math. For, I had one teacher for I had one teacher for math one, then I had a different teacher for math two and math three. Um, I had one teacher for, um, I think it was American history. It was American history, civics, and county history. Um, and then there was, there were two elective teachers, which one was literary analysis, the other was computer science slash coding. Oh, and there was also, I think I took career management with the same teacher that I did coding with. Um, so the one of the big challenges is in a big school, there are many teachers, but because there were so few teachers and there were so few students, it was very, very, very intimate. So you are with these people all of the time. Especially when we got back to normal school, which we got back by sophomore year, where you're going, you know, five days a week for eight hours, um, you know everybody. There's, well, I knew everybody in my cohort or my grade. Now, when I was a freshman, there were sophomores that I went to school with. And when I was a sophomore, there were freshmen that I went to school with. And I talked to the freshmen that were in my class, but I didn't know them as intimately because they pretty much just put you in like little groups and classes and then you kind of travel around with the group more or less. Um, so you know everybody. I could name every person in my cohort and I could name a good fair amount of freshmen. So that can be good and bad, especially if there's somebody that you don't get along with. Um, there can definitely be issues um, there are troublemakers and class clowns in every school, so we had some of those. Um, if you have friends that you fight with, then you're going to see them every day. And everybody knows everybody else's business. Drama spreads like wildfire. Everybody knows about everybody else's business. There's really no privacy. It's the idea of a small town. It's that same thing where like not a lot happens, so when something happens, it's a big deal. Um, so that is also not necessarily ideal, especially if you don't get along well with other people or if you have a certain niche you're interested in. Um, there's really not variety. Like, we started out, I think, with maybe 40, 35 people. Uh, I graduated this year with 22 people in my cohort. 
So a very, very, very small class, which has its challenges, um, like I said, where you have to deal with teachers that you might not like. But on the flip side, you might have teachers that you really like, and then you'll get them for the two years that you, you were in high school. While I was in high school, I took, I think, two separate college classes online, and that was health, um, which is an online class, and then music appreciation, which is also an online class. Um, overall, my course load was very, very, very thick, heavy, and dense. It was increasingly difficult, um, not only because I had only core classes, but because the te some of the teachers purposefully pushed you very, very hard. Now, I lived about 45 minutes away from the school, but I took the bus, so every morning I got up at 6.30 in the morning, and then I went to the bus, I think about seven, and I went on an hour bus ride to the school, and then I was at the school from eight to three every day, and then I had an hour bus ride home, and then directly after that, I would go to work. Um, in, I think it was sophomore year, I started working at the, thr at the thrift store, and then later in the year, I changed to work at my local Taekwondo academy. Um, so I was always working. Now, a lot of people wore themselves to death with this work. They put their all in and they just didn't really have a life or a social life or a work life. Um, I mean, some of those people succeeded. Personally, I did not do that. I realized that I am a person and I am allowed to have a life. So my rule personally, because I think they, they took so much of our time, is I didn't do any homework outside of school. There were many opportunities during school to get the work done. And there were occasionally times that I would spend maybe 30 minutes on homework outside of school. But very, very rarely was that the case. Most of the time I was able to complete all of the homework in class or I just took the low grade. Now, I got through all two years, all four semesters with A-Bs. And I really only had, I think, maybe three or four Bs in all while there. I will say that high school was 10 times harder than any high school you will attend, in, in my experience, um, for various reasons. And that the college is so much completely easier experience with the high school portion. So now moving on to the college experience. So I can drive, I've been able to drive since I was 15. I took the class and I got into the DMV early. So that gave me an advantage in what I would say was freedom. Um, I lived about 15 minutes away from the college campus. Starting in my junior year, I did not go to the high school. I only went to the college every, every day. If I had class, I would go to the college. I did not go to the high school. So there are many benefits to a college schedule. Some of the things are that when you're in college, you don't have to be there eight hours a day. When you are in college, you have classes and you have to go to the classes. So I think I had maybe five classes my first semester. Um, and I even think maybe a couple of them were online. So you get your schedule, you, you work with your advisor and you schedule your classes. You try and figure out what your plan's gonna be. And then it'll, your schedule will say something like, math is uh, Monday and Wednesday from eight to nine, which means Monday and Wednesday, you have to get yourself to class and be in class for that hour. And that's everything you do for the whole week for math in class, in person. And then you have homework and then you have to complete that homework. But that's everything for that math class. So sometimes people can schedule um, their classes so that they only have classes on Monday and Wednesday or they only have classes on Tuesday and Thursday. 
mainly pretty much all the classes I took and most of the classes other than classes that are really difficult like physics uh there are no classes on Fridays uh in my two years of junior and senior uh high school slash college I did not have any classes on Fridays I did not have to go on Fridays and I did not go on Fridays um and then because you are free because you are a college student now and no longer a high school student you can attend classes um and then leave then go back or you can skip classes you shouldn't skip skip classes most of the time but every once in a while i'd skip a class um and a lot of people did a lot of people went off campus for lunch um in the middle of my junior year i moved closer to campus so I moved 15 minutes away to five minutes away, and it's barely even five minutes. Um, so like I would have an hour break off of my classes. So I'd come back here with my friends um, and we'd hang out and then we'd go back. But you are completely free. I recommend if you do do this to get a driver's license if you can. I had the privilege of having my own car also, which really helped. So I was pretty much free to go about what I was doing. A lot of people are able to uphold a half-time or a full-time job while in college. I personally upheld a couple of half-time jobs, but I have a friend who upheld um, a full-time job and would work like 40 hours a week alongside college um, because the college that we went to is a community college, so they're used to them being adults who are working um, alongside of college. Um, personally, the schedule worked really well for me. Um, I am personally very, very self-motivated and driven. So it was easy for me to keep up with the work. It was easy for me to get to class on time, to come home, to make those kind of decisions. Overall, I had a great experience with the college. The professors, a lot of the professors I really liked. I think our college was really good with that. I really loved my advisor. Um, and there were some opportunities also with the college. So there were some clubs. Um, there were, there were not many clubs, but there were clubs. So there was, for a while, there was like a Spanish club. For a while, there was a craft club, a psychology club. I was part of the university transfer club, um, which ran the first year, but did not run the second year I was there. But the first year we went to um, one of our local colleges, and then we also volunteered with a tiger rescue, which was very cool. Um, and there are other opportunities available. Um, our libraries on campus, we had full access to the library. We were able to check out up to 20 books, and there was no, um, there were no overdraft fees either for being a student. You had full access to their online library also. Um, there were there was tutoring. You could be a tutor. I, I worked as a supplemental instructor for my second year, which is kind of a TA position. A lot of people worked in the office. A lot of people worked as tutors. And then tutoring for students was free. So I was tutored pretty much every semester for different classes. Um, and I want to make a different video kind of about tutoring, um, but it's not because I needed it as in I would fail if I didn't have it, but it was nice to have um, to keep me accountable and to keep my grades up. Um, I was able to get through all four semesters and all two years with straight A's. I didn't get one B in college. I loved it so much more than high school. The high school experience was really bad for me and it did not make me happy and it w was very stressful and a lot of people were very upset over the experience, but I think um, transitioning to college was was really good. It was kind of like you were treating suffering more for the first years to not for the second two years. Now, there were three options to get your associates in. There was engineering, there was science and there was arts. I chose arts because I hate math and science. So I did arts because I wanted to. And it was great. It was, it's the easiest, um, 
it's the easiest associates. Um, if you got a science, you could do it in two years. However, if you got an engineering degree, it would usually take three years to get all the appropriate um, requirements. So while I graduated this semester, some of my friends did not. Another reason why some of my friends did not graduate this semester or some of my peers is because they failed classes. If you fail too many classes, you have to take another semester to make up the classes that you failed. Um, sometimes you can withdraw in a class, but those credits still need to be made up. So that can happen. Something that I do want to talk about is missing out. So as part of this Frankenstein high school experience, I missed out on a lot of what we would assume is the average American high school experience. Now we did have prom. We had prom sophomore, junior, and senior year. Prom was very small. They invited the whole school. So it was not just junior and senior. It was the whole school. It was very well put on. It was very pretty. The venue was gorgeous. Um, the florist was great, like all of those things. Um, but it was just really small. Um, what was good though, is that because our school is smaller, tickets were cheaper. Uh, tickets to graduation, those things were a lot cheaper. Um, like my prom, I think it was $25. My friends was like 100 to attend, which I think is ridiculous. Um, I went to my sophomore and junior year proms. I did not go to my senior prom. I also did not go to my graduation, and those were choices. However, there were some experiences that were not offered. Um, there were... There wasn't a senior skip day. There wasn't a senior prank. There wasn't a senior walkout. There wasn't, there are a lot of different like senior things that I've heard of like senior sunrises and various other things I did not partake in. Well, that were not offered. There were some senior experiences that were offered. I know that there was like a senior breakfast at the school. Um, but overall, there was no theater program. There was no arts. Um, I was not able to do a lot of the things that I would have done if I was in a normal college. I would have gone to chorus. I would have done theater. I would have done all those senior activities um but there just wasn't because while we were seniors everyone else at, else at the college was mid program and they're adults um as you know a 16 year old in your junior year you're going in and you're working in rooms with adults that could be 18 19 20 21 year old I've had classes with 40 50 year olds it's a community college so anybody can attend well anyone who's accepted can attend so you're in classes with these people you talk to these people these people see you um I didn't feel unsafe about it at any point but that is something to be aware of um that's another reason why why the small community is bad is because um, you don't really have room to make friends. Now, some people did make friends with some of the people at my college. There are some homeschool people that go, uh, that are in our age group, but the majority of people that are outside of our school in particular are adults. And as a 16 year old, you're not making friends with 20, 21 year old people. Now I talked to 20, 21 year old people that I liked that I would have been friends with but I don't think that is necessarily an appropriate relationship to have um, with that wide of an age gap. Even as an 18 year old, I would be um, hesitant to create a friendship with a 20 or 21 year old or higher. So that is something to be aware of, like it is very restricted. Um, I would say that if someone was interested in the early college program um, in a small school like this, than to make friends outside of the school. 
in my senior year, I started to begin to make friends outside of my school, and I really appreciated that because um, I didn't get along with most of the people in my cohort. I did with a couple of people who I'm close friends with, but other than that, not really. And so broadening my social circle um, has really helped um, me. Anyone senior year, you're applying to colleges. So you're filling out the FAFSA and you are applying to the colleges you want to go to. My school was very hands-off in this process. Now, they did host two FAFSA nights at my high school, but I did not attend those. Um, apart from that, I didn't really have guidance as to how to do college applications, as to how to do scholarships, as to when to do these things. The only reason I need to start applying to colleges is because my peers started talking about it and I was hanging out with my peers. Uh, they didn't really send out any emails and they didn't provide much assistance. I felt very um, isolated in this situation with my parents, which is an even bigger deal to families who um, don't have parents that can help them because maybe they don't understand the process or because maybe they don't speak English. My mom is a college graduate. She has her master's and my dad has, has his associates. So they're both more educated and able to help me with these things. Uh, but all the processes for colleges and scholarships and everything was very, very difficult, especially to do isolated, especially to do, to do without much help. My friends who were in normal high school got a lot more of hands-on assistance with this process. Um, I ended up applying to three different schools and I got into all the schools that I applied to. Um, some people applied for a lot, some people didn't apply at all. Um, so I just would have liked more hands-on um, help with that because it was, it was very difficult to go through and it was very stressful. Luckily it turned out well but I'm sure there are some people who it didn't turn out well for. Okay, moving forwards, I got into the college that I wanted to, which is good. And I'm, I have committed to this college and I'm going to attend this college that I applied to. However, there are some issues. One of the issues is I got my associates, but when I was getting my associates, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And that's okay, and I would still encourage you to do it if you are going to and just kind of figure it out along the way. But that does come with issues. It's better if you know what you want to do going into it because I have, I think, 64 credits and I have my associate's degree and my high school diploma and I'm going to my college for an English secondary education course. I was hoping to do it in two years, four semesters, but Continuously, that looks more unrealistic, um, which is a financial burden, as it is on many um, families across the United States. College is expensive, and I was hoping by getting my associates, I, was, I would be able to cut those costs. But right as of now, it is not looking like I can do that. However, if I had known I was going into this field, I would have been able to more correctly predict which credits I would need and then transfer them over to my college. Um, another issue is not all, um, not all credits transfer. When a credit doesn't transfer, then you can petition for it. So I took American and British literature in my college and they did not transfer as American and British literature to my new college. So I'm petitioning for those. Um, but again, every credit I take is very expensive. Uh, because of my financial situation, I am paying for college out of pocket and I get no financial aid. So all of these things are things to consider going in. Just because you get your associates does not mean you are going to be able to get out of college in two years. So that is just the truth. Was it worth it? is a question that was asked many times when I was going into it, many times while I was in it, and now that I'm out of it, is a question that a lot of people ask. 
was the early college program worth losing out on high school? And I would say yes. I would say yes it is, even though the first few years were terrible. There are a couple reasons why I think it is worth the experience. So one of the reasons is because of the college schedule. Because of the freedom it allows you, especially me, who had a car and was able to work a job. I had, and because my parents are not strict, I was able to be allowed a lot of freedom at a young age, a lot more freedom than a lot of my friends had. Now, some people's parents are really strict, so this did not apply to them, or they didn't have a car which applied to them less. But for me, my parents were very, um, were very unstrict. So I was able to work and go to school and have a lot of fun um, being in college. And it, I really did like the college experience and I did really like a lot of my professors. So in that way it is. Another reason is if you don't know what you wanna do with your life, getting out of high school with an associate's degree puts you ahead of a lot of people a lot of people, especially as an 18 year old, if you don't know what you want to do and you're going straight into the workforce, having an associate's degree is a really big advantage, especially because it's free. So I would definitely say having that associate's is so worth it. And then if you know what you want to do and you're confident that's what you want to do, taking classes in that field can transfer to maybe to possibly make it so that you can go and do college for only two years but because I didn't know what I was going into um, a lot I didn't have a lot of credits going towards my degree because I wasn't sure so I just took classes that I wanted to take um, so overall because of those reasons I would say it is worth it there's, there are definitely things that you miss out on, and I'm not going to say that there aren't things that I miss, the things that I'm sad about that I didn't get to experience as a high school student, but overall, I would say it is worth it as an experience. So that's my experience as an early college student. Um, that, was, that was what I went through. Um, I tried to go as in depth as possible. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the co in the comments. Um, and I wanted to make this video because going into early college, I was trying to look up YouTube videos to see if anybody had talked about it, and I really didn't see anybody talk about it. So this is quite, this is all the information you needed. And this is just in my county, and this is just with my school. Um, this will definitely change depending where you are. So thank you for watching.